Hi, hello, it's Ivan from Propane Skillage, and today we're going to review on an app called Autodesk Sketchbook. So let's start. So as you know, it'll open a blank page like this here. And basically, I will show you the basics of it. Uh, so let's start. So I will also show you a few brushes. If you go here and you press this icon, you will go on a tab called brush properties. And if you press this icon, it'll basically show you the brush library where there are millions of brushes. Your Autodesk sketchbook has a lot of brushes. You can also download brushes. But let's start. So first we'll talk about brush properties. I'll just change my brush into uh, the inking pen. And I can also change the color by the color editor here. I can I just put it to full black now. And as you can see, the inking pen clearly has a very thick, dense line here. You can change the size by this option to slowly big. And you can also decrease the opacity. So as you can see, the opacity is the transparency of the brush or of the pen. So if I do now, if I draw a line here, the transparency goes down a lot than the line here. So that's brush properties. And next I'm going to show you is I'm just going to clear this all by this undo option here. And then I can redo it by the redo option here. So I'm just going to clear it. Yeah, the next thing I'm going to show you is brush library. So the brush library is massive. So whatever you are drawing, you can actually select which tab you want, the texture, essential tab, the synthetic paint tab, the Copic marker tab. There are a lot. I've also, also downloaded personal um, brushes that I've ordered. You can just go here and you can go to Sketchbook Extras. And load the sketchbook extra tab, and as you can see, there are millions of other brushes you can download here for any drawings. So, according to me, Autodesk Sketchbook is one of the most advanced free drawing apps and the best drawing apps ever. So, now we will go on and review on this tab. As I told you, this is undo and this is redo. Next thing we're going to learn is this magnification thing. So as you can see, a thing like this appears, a control pad like this appears. If you long press on this, and you can move out, you can zoom in, zoom out, and this can be really helpful. Once you leave the long press, again, you can get this up. You can also move your image as far as you want with these arrows here. And you can also rotate it. So these will come really, really, really handy in your drawings. If you want to see like your final image of your drawings, you can use this. I just go and undo it here. So well, yeah, I can also go and put this back. It'll automatically come back in shape. So now I can just press this cross icon to shut this control bar off. So now the next thing we're now going to cover up on these. I'll just go here. <sighs> so the next thing we will learn is this tool. So these are tools, as you can see, one, two, three, four tools is something we're not going to learn today. We'll just learn these two today. So imagine if I'm taking the brush, I go here and I set the size to, let's say 100. And I'll put the opacity to 100. So yeah. And if I, if you can see if I draw this entire thing, it'll be quite easy to do since my size is 100. But let's take that I am using a very small brush. Imagine the pencil here. Let's go click here. And now if I do it, you see it's really hard to cover this entire thing with one background. So if I want to use a background and and then I will use 
my pen, pencil. Imagine you're gonna clear this entire thing, draw this entire thing. It's really hard, and it might take a lot of time. So what you should do is use this filling tool. What the filling tool does here is you can just click on this, and you can fill it. Just simple as just one click, and it's really easy. You can also choose a linear fill here. You can rotate it by whatever direction you want. So these are basically like gradients, and you can do this if you want. It's a radial fill, as you can see. It's more like a circular fill here. So yeah, so you can do this as you can see. These will also come really helpful, and these are really cool. <laughs> so I'll just go and undo all of this. And, uh, also go back to my raising tool here, which as you can make out from its name is a raising tool. And then I can raise this entire thing. I just move this aside. And yeah, that's the raising tool do. Next thing I will show you all is this text tool. I'll just go here and type the row paint. Not paint, of course. You can select whatever fonts you want. I'll just take this vector new e to uh like show you all. And now if I press like you could also select which color you want. I'll just put it full red. Again, I'll go back to there. Put this full red. So it'll become red as you can see. Now I'll go hit this OK button. And as you can see, this book, uh, the text comes here and a new control pad comes here. You can also rotate. This is this, is, this control pad is made for the text. You can rotate this text. You can also increase the font size or the scale. You can make it very wide and like little wide. Then you can move it wherever you want. So this will come really handy. And yeah, for now, I'll just shut this and undo everything. Now the next thing I'll show you all is the scaling tool. I'll just go press here. And so, well, so I'll just shut this. Even if I know, like very skilled artists, they can draw a perfect straight line. But as you all know, me and other artists, which can't draw that good lines, uh, usually end up doing a very curvy line as here. Well. So that's where the scaling tool comes. Derived by its name, it literally acts like a scale to your drawing and it will be also helpful. So I will just go. So I'll just use a scale and I can do a special tab. I'll just move it here to show you all the color editor and the brush properties tab. And if I draw now, the line becomes straight, like straight, straight. So this is how it will work. The scaling tool now. You all may think that we don't want it to be slanting, as you can see. So you can just long press this and move the scaling tool to angle 90 here. As you can know, the angle 90 is a straight angle. So, well, that's the scaling tool. Next thing I will show you all is the... So, these three things we will not review today. I will actually now move on to the symmetry tool. So, if I go here, you can see that this is the exact mirror image. As I'll derive again from its name, it's a symmetry tool. So what this thing does, it basically mirrors your drawing next to it. And then you can change the size. Again, now this will be vertical. It's really calming. Now the, I will share your one tool which I personally love. You can just press the cross icon here to shut it. Now, I personally love this tool. It's really relaxing. It's basically a symmetry tool. And if I go and click here, 
uh, it'll show you different apps now. Oh, this is really good for mandalas, as you can see. Really relaxing. Ooh. Whoa. As you can see, you can use this for your mandalas and paintings, basically symmetry objects. And this will be really, really, really handy. So that's the symmetry tool. You can actually decrease how many lines you want by this tool. So this can come really handy. It's really stress relieving also. Now, the next thing I will show you all is, oh, my bad. Just press cross icon here to shut it. So now the next thing I'll show you all is this tool. Oh, sorry, this is the advanced one, this tool. So I'll okay, put it to five here, oh, you all understand. So now if I draw a line, it'll, Im it'll immediately, my bad, it'll immediately make it straight and smooth. Like, look at this. It's a curvy line, imagine this. If I draw a circle, you make it perfect. So this will also come really if you are like an unsmooth draws or you can't you don't have a sturdy hand. This tool will be really helpful for you. So now next thing I'll go to as shown in the photo is the shape tool. You can draw a line here, you can draw a square here. And you can draw a circle here. So this is also really handy. And it's basically this the shape tool, like in any other digital drawing platform. Autodesk Sketchbook also has a shape tool. Well, not that many shapes, but does. Whoa, what's this? So I think this is a shape drawing tool. Oh wow, so this you can basically draw your own shape here. That's the first step of me also looking at this. You can draw your own shape here. It's basically like a polygon tool. You can just click here. So you can just double click, just stop it. It's a new tool for me also, guys. Now I will cover up on, on these three things. These three are really important. I'll just go shut this, shut this, and shut everything. So now, if you don't know where layer tool is, or if you don't know where your brush tool is, or you don't know where your color tab is, well, you can just press here. This one is for layers, this one is for brush, and this one is for the color tab. This one's also for the Copic marker tool here, the Copic library. This is really advanced, so I will not teach all this today. So now the next thing we will do is go ahead and learn this thing. So let's start with the brush. I'll just shut all of these. So let's start with the brush, a palette, a brush, library, if you know. So this can show all the brush properties and the brush library. Uh, as covered in the starting of the video, this is really helpful. You can navigate through your brushes here from each of these tabs, or the oil tabs, the Rousset paste set tabs, or the incurred set tabs, the crunch set texture tab. So there are a lot of tabs here, and hope you all will like this. Next thing is the brush properties. You can increase and decrease the hardness slash size from here, and the opacity, which is the transparency from here. So next thing we lose the color tab. You can select the color from here. This, 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 this. You can also go here and select this. This is really advanced too. So I will not be color, uh, uh, covering up this topic here. This is also another thing here, but also it's advanced. Uh, even I don't know this. So even I won't be able to cover this up. Now, the next thing, this is a color editor. You can select your color from your very precise color. From here, if you want. And then, next thing I'll teach you is layers. So, imagine, um, okay, fine. So, imagine you're drawing something. I'll actually shift over from, I'll actually shut this page here. In the starting of the video, I mentioned I'll be showing you another of my drawings so i just shut this page here 
I press do and see that this is just a blank document. And then I will show you all one of my drawings. So one sec, it's opening. So this is one of my drawings I have made. I'll just open it with the sketchbook tab. So these, uh, this is one of the drawings I have done. Just hold on my battery, that's down 2%, so I'll come back. So sorry for the delay. Now, this, now why I, I just shut this here. Now, why I actually opened a new drawing is to show you layers. So I'll go to my magnification tool here and I will just um, like zoom out. So I just press the cross icon to shut this. Now I want to show you the importance of layers. Now imagine I will merge these two layers. Um, I think it's here. So imagine if I merge this layer. Now if you see, if I go to my raising tool here, this raising tool, my bad, the raising tool here. And if I raise it, I only, imagine if I only want to raise this end here and not the background. And I try to raise this, the entire background also goes with this. So that's when the layer tool comes. You can just, I'll just go back here and I will uh, press my undo thing. And now if I just want to raise the end, I can simply, oh my bad, I'll just go to this layer and if I want to raise the end again, I can just raise it without the background being raised. So how this happens is that I've created two layers, one layer with the text row paint and the other layer with the background. So if I have this layer, this layer is the background. And now if I hide this layer, I'll show this layer. This layer is a propane text. So now Autodesk Sketchbook will, and first of all, you'll have to click this layer and then only do it. So now if I raise this Autodesk Sketchbook will think that I'm only raising this layer, not the background layer. So that's how layers work. They're also really handy. If you don't want to raise your background, if you only want to raise one particular object in a layer, then layers are handy. Well, guys, that's it. So there will also be a part two when I will review on an app called Tie Size Sketches Pro. It's also really helpful and it's awesome in watercolor. So wait up and bye for now. Hey, guys, hope you all enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe, like this video and turn on post notifications to get notified when we upload something new and we will see you all in our next video.